So in the whole of lecture three on public goods, we have learned that providing public goods is difficult because of the free rider problem. We have also learned that government intervention is beneficial or can be beneficial because it solves the free rider problem. But there are also ways for private companies or entities to actually solve that free rider problem. And the challenge both for practitioners who design public policies and for researchers is to think deeply about what would be the optimal mix or what is the optimal policy. So should the government simply provide all the public goods or should we allow or hope that, that private entities will provide them, which would be the, the you know, radical free market approach, or is there some, some mix where we can exploit the, 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 the incentives that free markets provide, that free markets offer, while at the same time have some government intervention in order to, to actually ensure that public goods are produced. And so one important uh, aspect of uh, the government providing public goods that make public goods provision potentially less efficient than when it was then in the optimal world where all public goods were privately uh, provided is the so-called crowding out effect. So if the government provides a public good, um, any person or any firm has no incentive to also contribute to that public good. And so that, that, is, that is obviously a, a, a challenge that is bigger in some areas than, than in others and depends basically on how expensive that public good is and how much people would have otherwise contributed. And because let's face it, to provide a public good, the government needs to spend taxpayers' money, and if th that that can only be spent once, and there is a there is a budget constraint um, that that the government faces. So, if people would contribute to that public good, how much they contribute would contribute um, if it wasn't provided by the state? If they did contribute that, the state could take could top it up and spend the rest on other things. And so that, that crowding out effect is then, is then a challenge because it basically would lead to a waste of, 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 of taxpayer money and, and simply limits the, the opportunities a government has and can provide to, to its citizens. Now, if you look at the textbook by Gruber, you will find some empirical examples about crowding out. Um, where uh, what they these papers that study that typically do is they look at the introduction of a certain public good, like a public pension or a general health care, for example, and to what extent that crowds out private contributions. Now, by and large, what they see is that there is no full crowding out and the size of the crowding out effect is very context dependent. So we cannot say that it's the general rule is that as soon as the government provides a public good, private contributions go down to zero. That seems to be generally not true, but, but the, the, the reduction of private contributions can vary quite a lot. And that, that, that creates a challenge. And not only that, there are, so, so there, there are quite some challenges if you want to think about what the government could do as in, in terms of an optimal policy when it comes to the provision of public goods. So here are the two extremes. The, but there is a third extreme. That the, the, the one extreme would be uh, that the public sector provides the public good entirely. So a city council has its own workers that provide then the public good. Um, the other extreme that's not mentioned here is that is the radical free market solution we just hope that someone will provide the public good and there is enough people who find together and then see this as an important common cause to to actually uh, provide the public good 
Um, and but we know that this is very hard and 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 uh, leads often to to suboptimal uh, scenarios. So these are the two extremes here that I mentioned. Here are those that would actually lead to a socially optimal outcome. So either the public sector provides it, or um, there is a mandated private provision. So so we actually um, either force private participants in the market to contribute um, or we incentivize them to, to do so. Um, and, and related to the second extreme, I will introduce a, a, a common solution uh, on the next slide that you also see very often being used in, in, in Ireland and, and other countries in Europe. Now, the challenge with the the public provision of the public good is a crowding out so it can get quite expensive so expensive in the sense that people no longer contribute um, it can also be expensive in terms of the actual provision you know think about government workers uh, you know they may not be as efficient and as experienced in providing a certain public good than, uh, than actually workers in specialized private firms. Um, and obviously we also have this, this problem of whose marginal benefit is highest, so who benefits most from, from that, that public good is very, very hard for a government to monitor. Um, now the other uh, potential, the, the, the other extreme is that, that we mandate the, 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 pub, the private provision of the public good. Uh, so we, we incentivize firms to provide it or we, we subsidize uh, we subsidize firms and maybe exploit that, that some people will contribute anyway and we offer that we top up their contributions if they contribute. And, and that can but doesn't have to solve the free rider problem. Um, the, the problem with any private provision of public goods on behalf of the government is that is the imperfect monitoring of quality right so this is what economists call a principal agent problem whereby you have a principal that's the government and the government has a goal namely to provide this public good in the best possible way but also as efficiently or as cost effective as possible um, and on the other hand, you have an agent, which is the firm or the, the consortium of firms that actually carries out those works and provides the public good. And that firm, if we assume it's a regular firm, it's probably a profit maximizer. And one of the, the, the main uh, parameters where they can adjust how much profit they make is through the quality. The, the problem arises here because the, the principal, the government, cannot perfectly monitor the quality of the public goods provision. They may do this to some extent through, I don't know, buildings ex inspectors or different types of regulators, but it's, it's not easy and it's costly. Right? And so there are some uh, domains where it's very tricky to monitor quality and, and others where it's easier because the government has more expertise in monitoring. Right? Um, if you are from Ireland, uh, you can ask uh, relatives who were already you know, um, grown ups during the Celtic Tiger, and they probably will, will give you a lot of examples or will be able to give you examples about how, you know, public goods uh, have been provided, you know, public buildings have been built and people have done a very sloppy job because they couldn't that the, the local councils couldn't perfectly monitor the works of of the the private sector workers who were carrying out the works um and and so on and so 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 there, there's certainly an abundance of of such examples of imperfect monitoring which then results in poor quality hmm? And so it's, it's hard, hard to, to get, get for a, a government to get the incentives right um, to and, and, and there may obviously be also the things going on like lobbying so whereby firms lobby the government and in order to get the, those those contracts to provide provide the private provision um, to provide the public good um, that may lead to inefficiencies and may make a project a lot more expensive than it would otherwise be. Um, and, uh, and, and so 
uh, to lobbying, rent seeking, or other types of corruption, uh, private provision may actually become quite expensive, even though in principle it should not be. Right? So, so that's that's why the, the, the very common solution is contracting out uh, public uh, public goods provision whereby the government is responsible for provision and monitor, monitors that, uh, monitors the quality of the public goods provision to the extent that it can, but it's the, the provision itself is carried out by private firms. So you often have, you know, if you, if you um, look at local council web pages, um, you have to search a little bit, but they typically have, uh, have tenders or calls for tenders whereby uh, they say, okay, we, we want for a firm or a couple of firms to carry out this and this public project and uh, please tell us how much this will cost you basically and then make a submission, um, submit a tender that, that then, uh, and based on which we can then choose which firm to, to take. Um, but there are obviously always challenges with that in, in practice. So, so to the extent that this can be well monitored and to the extent that this, this competitive bidding uh, is, uh, works, this, this can work very well. Um, but it's, it's challenging for government to ensure a fair process because obviously local politicians have an incentive to maybe um, give whatever they, uh, the, the works they have to firms they are connected to. Um, because the cheapest firm may not always be the best provider um, and, and so on and so forth. And firms and, and local politicians may, may, may be no more than the, the national government that actually makes the rules for monitoring and so on. So there are all sorts of uh, tricky issues here that need to be resolved by government. Um, and one conclusion could be, well, then we should just not provide public goods at all. But I hope we can all agree that that's not a, um, a you know, that does not lead us to an optimal solution, right? Imagine a country like Ireland without any public goods being provided, where everyone is just, everything is just decided on a, uh, in a marketplace. Um, that would not be a place that, that I guess most of us would want to live in. So the challenge here is more to, for researchers like, like myself, find designing incentive schemes that, that solve some of those free rider problems and problems of imperfect monitoring. And, and then for practitioners, for, for, for politicians, for local councils and so on, to, 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 to solve some of those or to address and solve some of those challenges.